Hey everybody, Hack Creature here. So, episode 5, I think, of the Book of Boba Fett uh, came out today, Wednesday. I'm actually recording this, uh, no, no, no. Uh, I'm actually watching it on Wednesday. Usually, uh, I watch it during the evening of Wednesday, and then I make the recording, and then I put it out Thursday. Uh, but anyway... That's besides the point. Uh, in the in the last video, uh, I went and I went and actually said that the Fire Sprite Thirty One class, uh, Boba Fett's ship, was mistakenly first called a Fire Spray back in in a book in twenty fifteen. That is false. Uh, someone else made a video. Uh, I forget who it was, and they were talking about the Fire Spray. Uh, I actually completely forgot about it. The Fire Spray. Slave One was, you know, Boba Fett's, sorry, Django Fett's ship, his father. And it was actually called a fire spray in the Django Fett video game, Star Wars Bounty Hunter. Uh, it actually shows how Django got his ship, which is the same ship that his son Boba Fett uses. So that was the first mention of that model being a fire spray. That was my mistake. So I just want to say that out front. My apologies to, to uh, anybody who knew that and didn't say anything about it. <laughs> Thank you. But I would appreciate it uh, if you did know that, uh, but you just didn't say anything. Please go ahead and correct me. I enjoy being wrong because it means I learned something. So thank you. Anyway, on to the episode. Uh, episode 5. What happened? Um, what went on in Boba Fett's story? How did the story progress? I don't know. I don't know. Um, episode 5 of the Book of Boba Fett has nothing to do with Boba Fett. Uh, episode 5 of the Book of Boba Fett is Return of the Mandalorian. Uh, so, Boba Fett is actually a spinoff of the Mandalorian show with Jin, I think his name is. I keep pr pronouncing his name wrong. I call him Mando, just like everybody. But... Yeah, the whole episode is about an entirely different character that just shows up in the episode. So the entire episode is about Mando and his story after Mandalorian Season 2. What has he been up to since the end of his second season? And it's great. Uh, if you haven't watched The Mandalorian, I really don't want to spoil any of it because it's pretty serious. Like, like everything in the episode is... A spoiler for every single season, uh, both of them. But yeah, uh, the entire episode focuses on Mando, and it is beautiful. It, uh, Mr. H, uh, reviews, great channel, great guy. Totally check him out. Keep forgetting to link his channel. But anyway, great guy. Uh, the title for his review was the best episode of The Mandalorian is the worst episode of Book of Boba Fett. And I kind of want to agree with him because the whole episode was amazing. And I can't say that about Book of Boba Fett. Uh, the reason I have this on here is actually just as a background. My background isn't too good. I mean, it's not, yes. But that's not important. So, yeah, nothing really happens with Boba Fett. The whole thing is about Mando. Um, we see more of, of his clan with the Mandalorians. Uh, we hear more about his backstory. Uh, we see his intention with his little green friend that everyone called Baby Yoda, but is named Grogu. Uh, we, we see him grow as a character. We, we see him go through so much. It's just a single episode. And that's the problem. Because this is Mando, not Boba Fett. It's four episodes of Boba Fett, and there's no real character growth. Uh, I was reading an article. Uh, no, uh, my apologies. I glimpsed at an article. And the article was saying that there was no character growth with Boba Fett, that he always remains the same throughout the entire show, and that is true. He doesn't grow at all. He's already grown. And that's interesting, which explains uh, something I said in the last episode. Uh, in my last review, I said that this Boba Fett is an older Boba Fett who's come to terms with his career choice and wants to move on. You know, he wants to settle down. This show 
does not actually show that because he's already at that point when it starts which makes no sense uh in return of the jedi when boba fett gets eaten by the sarlacc that's where his story ends in the movies and this show is where his story continues when he leaves the sarlacc but it doesn't make any sense on how he suddenly changed from a ruthless bounty hunter mercenary then he gets eaten and then he digs himself out and all of a sudden he's like i want to settle down you could call it a uh, a rebirth scenario, kind of like a baptism, dying, rebirth. This he died in the Sarlacc. Everyone's everyone thought he was dead, and then he eventually, you know, leaves the Sar Sarlacc, and that's his rebirth. It's basically a biblical thing right there, baptized through death, and but that's not really what the show says. It's something you have to figure out for yourself. We have to figure out that while he was dead and then coming to rebirth, he's come to terms. But he doesn't ever actually say that. Yeah, I mean, I mean, he he talks about the idea. He definitely talks about, you know, being the one in charge. And he does talk about the dangers of being a bounty hunter. Like, don't you wish that in any one of your jobs, that if you did it your way, instead of you know outside interference the job would have been done better less lives would have been lost he does say that but the lives lost part doesn't make sense uh, it's never we never really get to know who this man is ever because of how it's written because we never knew who he was in the movies and we don't know who he is or who he became in the show there there's no definitive of who boba fett is in this chronological timeline because all we know in the movies is that he was a dude who barely spoke he looked intimidating he had that iconic green armor and that rifle and you know he captured han solo brought him to jabba the hut and then he died and then when he comes out He's a talker. He really doesn't want to kill anyone at all. Uh, he's a pushover. Everyone pushes him around. He just takes it. And what? It, it, it doesn't make any sense. And this all has to do with the writing. And I just want to blame Disney for everything because this is their show. And this is definitely their show. And it's so strange because the this episode, episode five feels completely different. It's totally different. This is not a Book of Boba Fett episode. This is a Mandalorian episode. The entire episode is a Mandalorian episode. Because the Mandalorian, the tone, the pacing, the mood, the color palette, it's all different from Boba Fett. Boba Fett's show is a, a light, brighter show with a lot of talking and a lot of being passive. And let's just remain calm. Well, Mandalorian is a darker, serious show where at any moment, blaster fire could pop out and everybody dies at any moment. And yeah, it is slow and there is talking, but there's not a lot of talking. Uh, Mando is a very soft-spoken person who doesn't get pushed around. You don't push him around. You, he, he refuses to be pushed around, unlike Boba Fett. That's what sets them apart. That's what sets the shows apart. Because Mando, while he isn't intimidating in any way, while he isn't threatening in any way, he refuses to back down. At every moment in the show, uh, in every episode, he, you know, he, he's often pointed with a choice. You know, walk away. Let us do what we're, we're going to do. And you get out of here. Like, no, I'm not going to go with you. We have you surrounded. You're done. If you want to bring me in and, and get the reward, then you're going to have to go through us. Or you can just leave. Now, in that scenario, Boba Fett would leave, as he has done in every episode, because he's so passive and nonviolent. Mando doesn't back down. He isn't intimidating, 
He doesn't threaten anybody. He doesn't back down. He just says, okay, I can see it's not going to go my way. And then he just pulls out his blaster and it just starts fighting. There's no negotiations. There's no talking his opponent down. There's no threatening, trying to convince him to come with him. No, he just starts fighting because there is no other option. It, it's either walk away in disgrace or die trying to enact your will upon everybody. That's who Mando is. And that's why this episode is good, because that happens in the episode. In the beginning of this episode, Mando walks into a freezer trying to arrest this, um, I don't know what species they are, but some alien dude. He's one of her bounty. Mando goes in. He's surrounded by guards. Mando tries to play it cool, like, hey, I'm looking for a bounty. It's you. You're coming with me, either dead or alive. You know, that, that's something that Django would say. Dead or alive, you're coming with me. Although, that, that, I think that's actually RoboCop. I think that's actually RoboCop. <laughs> but the point is the same. And the dude, the alien, he's like, well, I'm not coming with you. We got you surrounded. And that's what happened. So Mando kills everybody in the room. He kills everybody in the room except one guy. He leaves because he, he wasn't hostile. But he kills everybody. And he wasn't filled with malice or hate or sadism. He just did his job and walked away. And that's who Mando is. That's not who Boba Fett is. That's who Jango Fett was. But not Boba Fett. And that's so strange. And it, and it gets even weirder when you think about the cartoon, Star Wars Clone Wars. Which I believe is canon. Like, yeah, 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 it is canon because uh, Ahsoka Tano was from Clone Wars, and she's in Ma uh, she's in Mandalorian, and she's getting her own show. So it is canon. So if you think about Star Wars Clone Wars and Boba Fett as a child, uh, because he was a main, uh, uh, he was a huge antagonist uh, in the Clone Wars show. Uh, I don't know what season, but he's in there, and you see him try to enact his vengeance for the death of his father, try to find Mace Windu and murder him uh, for murdering his dad. And, and and he teams up with gang members uh, uh, and, like, you know, Sith, mer mer other mercenaries and bounty hunters, all to get vengeance for what happened to his dad. That's who Boba Fett was as a child. And then he grew up. We see him in the movies. He's all alone. And now we see him in the TV show. And it's like they're just two different people. Now, yeah... It is that rebirth thing, and he's an older man. But it really just doesn't connect. Something is missing in the writing. The writers missed something. They completely wrote him in the entire show as a passive dude who's just ready to give up. He's not giving up. You know, this is life. He, You know, he's trying to rule his kingdom. But his attitude is that he gave up. And uh, the actor... Uh, Tim Wera Morrison, great actor. You know, he's doing the best that he can under the circumstances. And even he says that the character isn't being portrayed correctly. Now, I like the story, you know, trying to become a crime lord and take over the thing. I think that's cool. That's a cool story. It's a small, small setting. Easy. It's nice. I like it. Uh, the problem is the presentation and the execution. Uh, Tim Wera, he, he flat out told everybody that he talks too much, that his character speaks too much, and he can't keep his intimidating nature by talking all the time. And he tried to pass his lines off to uh, his co-star, uh, Ming-Na Wen, who plays Frenic, not Krennic, my bad. Uh, but they're like, no, no, you have to say all these lines. You have to say all these lines. We need exposition. You need to say all these lines. So they're just purposely ruining the character. And he's been trying to warn them and tell them this is bad, this is bad, and they don't care, they don't care, they don't care. They're just ruining the show, ruining the character uh, with, with, with all this stuff. And it's just so depressing when you look at episode five and how amazing The Mandalorian is. And that's the point of this review. The Mandalorian episode in Book of Boba Fett is the best episode in the show. 
It is the best episode. It's not okay. It's not good. It's not decent. It's great. It is the best episode in the show, and it's not even about Boba Fett. Uh, it, it's like getting a hot date, and then you go to your parents' house to meet him, and then your brother comes in, hasn't been home in years, just shows up as a surprise, and like, hey, everybody, everybody loves the older brother, even your date. Your date would rather talk to your older brother than you on your date. That's the Mandalorian. And Boba Fett's the little brother. We are the hot date because we're fucking fine. And yeah, that... That's it. That's it. This show is a failure. And that's why. I like the show. It's an okay show. But the Mandalorian is better. Uh, especially when you put them side by side. It's not right to compare them to each other because they're two different shows, but Boba Fett is just not... Like, he's just a bad character, and I feel bad for saying that. So yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But I like the show, and I'm going to keep reviewing it because I like the show. It's an okay show. But they totally missed the mark, and they ruined it. They ruined everything about it, and they're doing it on purpose. And, uh, that's about it for this episode. It's about 16 minutes too long. I don't know how the videos usually are. But anyway, thank you guys for watching. Let me know your thoughts. Are you watching the show along with it? Uh, or are you just listening to my reviews? How's it going? Do you like where it's going? Have you seen The Mandalorian? It's a damn tragedy, man. <laughs> damn tragedy. So anyway, thank you guys for watching. I'm anxious to hear your thoughts. And as always, have a great day.